Excuse me. Is there any way to open? Uh, it's raining, so I will open when it's raining. You guys doing shoots? I want to take a photo outside, like up here. You guys doing shoots? No, just photos. Video shooting? No. Nope. Yeah, this is makes things like very stable. I just I just lied at the security guard. These are not the cameras you're looking for. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the previous two episodes of Moments in Time. Now we've got a bus to catch if we're going to make it to Kuala Lumpur on schedule. We're running really late. Still got to get our tickets. Our bus leaves in like 10 minutes. It's probably in here. This is huge. It's not this way. Excuse me, do you know where the Aeroline bus? Up, 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 up. Aeroline. It was this one. Okay, downstairs. All right, thank you. Got the tickets. It's this double decker. Aeroline. All right, let's get our bags. So we got to start putting our stuff underneath. All our stuff. I think they're going to have to reload a little bit. We've, we've broken the system. It's a luxury bus. It's actually like one eighth the price of flying. And you get like nice seats and personal entertainment. And you actually get to see the view driving by, which is kind of cool. It's easy to lose Singapore on the map because it rests on the southernmost point of the Malaysia Peninsula, separated only by a narrow series of international waterways called the Straits of Johor. But historically, Singapore was part of Malaysia from 1957 until it broke away to form its own city-state in 1965. The difference between the two countries is immediately apparent after crossing the bridge over the strait. While Singapore is packed to the brim with buildings, cars, and people, as soon as you drive into Malaysia, you start to see nature, farms and forests stretching for hours and seeming to never end. Until you get to KL. Situated at the confluence of the Gombak and Klang rivers, Kuala Lumpur is Malaysia's biggest city and capital. In Malay, it actually means muddy confluence, which is very appropriate considering monsoons are frequent here and the city sometimes floods during heavy rains. Having undergone massive growth in the last 20 years, it's still not slowing down. Almost any skyline view is filled with building cranes and new construction. The most famous structures in KL are the Petronas Twin Towers, and from 1998 to 2004, they were the world's tallest buildings. But more on them later. Right now, I'm meeting up with Yaman Ibrahim, a Fujifilm ex-photographer and KL local, to show me around the historic old quarter of the city. It's interesting that just because I do landscape and cityscape, it doesn't mean that that's the only photography I look at or admire. In fact, the photography that I consume personally is usually documentarian style photography, street photography, black and white, fine art. I actually feel like we can learn more and, and acquire new knowledge for our own art by studying other genres altogether. And it's fun now because usually I just get to look at the end result. Now I feel like I get to be a, a part of the world. And, a part of uh, being able to capture this. You're only gonna get this from a local perspective. Yaman knows these streets, he, he knows some of these people running into photographers that he knows here. He knows exactly where to go and that's, that's with, with comfort and experience. This catches my eye just because of the, yeah, the because lines. Of the lines. You know, so to be able to maybe catch somebody walking. That's better if you use tele, tele lens. See the light? Oh, beautiful. It's around 9 or 9.30. Are they allow photography? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. See the rim light? Yeah, that's nice. This definitely takes some knowledge. You know, we have all of the incense burning, and then in another five minutes, the sun's going to be high enough, it's clear enough, where the light's going to come through and add more dynamic lighting to a scene that's already really beautiful. I'm also trying to be quiet out of respect for a sacred space. And that's something when you're photographing historical sites, religious sites, you could still be in here taking photos, but definitely show some respect as well. You, you think we've approached the right time now? The lighting's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But there's no people there. So we're watching now these shadows. Yes. So we know because of the long shadow yes. here. Wait, hello. Wait and wait and wait. 
Well, we, we encounter this a lot. Because often we'll see photographs online or in a gallery and we'll think, that's an amazing photo. But we don't know how long it took. How many days, years, how many times? It's like you say, it's just like you say, you wait for five years for the fog, right? <laughs> what I've noticed too is even with all the preparation as many times, luck. Yeah, people don't know that. Luck people takes just, the role. just saw the, your, your photo and yeah, it's good, it's good. They, they don't know how, how hard for us to, to get that, that, that shot. I think it's encouraging for people to learn that too because it makes them feel better because sometimes we can't help but compare our work to others and when you see that, that photo that you don't know it took five years, you just think, wow, wow, you know. But then when you learn the work, then it makes you feel good because, because you know you can put the same amount of work in. You know, it takes effort, timing and planning. Yeah, I mean, you put a uh, good effort for the good photos. We have a combination of the incense, the smoke, the light streaming through to create that back rim light and Yaman's position himself uh, right in the middle. In these types of situations, sometimes you can't get a lot of photographers in the same spot. So if you favor symmetry, it's good to come by yourself. Uh, if you happen to be in a spot with a lot of photographers, sometimes everybody's kind of crowding around. And not only is it difficult to get the shot that you want, but it also draws a lot more attention from the people. Yaman was able to get the shot he wanted both as a wide and a medium. Then it was time to go to a more chaotic location in the city, the second-hand market. Okay. Have you been here? This is Patalin Street. I have never been to this street. No. no. This is Patalin Street. I think this is the most famous street in Kuala Lumpur. Every tourist, everybody that come to Malaysia will come here. So, okay, it's a famous street. So then if you're going to take photos here, are people pretty used to having their photos taken? Yes, okay, no problem. This, this street full of stall and stall, stall shops. And then they're selling good, uh, like imitate, imitation, no? imitation products. Yeah, imitation yeah. products. Yeah. No, you yeah. could say it. They sell, they sell <laughs> fake products. Yeah, <laughs> you can, you can find everything here. <laughs> Come, this is the place. This? Oh, this is yeah, it. This is okay. the place. See, here we can, we can, we can find a plenty of nice oh, portraits. Yeah, yeah, I see. I also smell the garlic. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of parts of things are being sold. Little toy guns next to hair dryers, next to shoes. There was a little tripod there, My Little Pony, and a tin of Johnny Walker Black Label. It's tough for me. Street photography is not my main thing. So I kind of need something with a little bit, let's just say training wheels on it. That's not this uh, claustrophobic. I want a photo of the guy in the pirate hat. I want to do one vertical one of you there. I like your hat. It's, it's perfect. See, I'm from uh, the Caribbean, so I know the hat. Oh, cantik lah bang. Lama. Ensen semua cantik, cantik perempuan. Side lagi, side lagi. Yes. So here, you spent a lot of time with this guy. He's very interesting. I saw maybe you were trying to position the lines behind him straight. And then what else, what made you spend so much time with him? No, I think, uh, actually, I, I, I like his face. Seldom you, you, can, you can find a man wearing a ear, earring or something like that. I know this is for, just for gimmick, for uh, selling goods, right? But then, uh, since he's nice too, why not? Okay. okay. So he seemed very willing. Yeah. That's what attracted you to yeah. his interestingness and yeah. his willing to yeah, be willing a part to of it. Uh, we, you know, to be part of our, our, oh. our shooting today. How long have you been shooting street photography? Ten years. Ten years. Oh, wow. Ten, twelve years. No, actually, for me, street photography is a, like a hobby. Right. Uh, you know, the Passion. Yes. Uh, street photography cannot make you money, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the best things you do in photography are yeah. usually because of passion. Yeah. You can't think about money. <laughs> no one wants to buy you know, other people's faces. <laughs> Yaman and I spent a few hours catching more people on the streets as they went about their day, sold their wares, and in one particular instance, I even got to meet a baby chicken. That was pretty cool. These chickens are kind of cute too. Now it's time to head to Trader's Hotel in downtown Kuala Lumpur because their pool deck has one of the best views of city center. But we immediately ran into some trouble. 
Hello, how are you? Uh, no reservation. I was just hoping we could get one of these uh, couches, maybe? Yes, you can, so you can sit anywhere you want. It's just so you, you are not allowed to use any tripod. No tripods? Right, to get oh, no problem, but I can stand up and take photos and as long as I don't set up a tripod. Yes, that's why I Oh, no problem at all. I'll just keep it on the bag. Thank you. So here's what I'm trying to figure out. We can sit anywhere we want, but what I want to figure out is how to open this. Excuse me, is there any way to open? Uh, it's raining, so I will open when it's raining. You guys doing shoot? I want to take a photo outside, like up here. Uh, you guys doing shoot? No, just photos. Video shooting? No, because yeah, this is, makes things like very stable. I just, I just lied at the security guard. These are not the cameras you're looking for. I think what we're gonna do is head over here because there's less people that work here over there and they won't really notice that we're not actually just taking photos. This place has a hard no tripod rule. So I can't set this guy up, but I can use a little tabletop tripod. Now what this is gonna give me the ability to do is set this up on top of this little platform so when it gets dark, instead of hand holding my camera, I can put it on this little guy here, set everything up, and then get a perfectly stable shot. And since I'm using a tripod, even though it's a cute little mini tripod, I can actually get the best settings too. So I can leave the camera at F8, lowest ISO possible, and come away with the best shot possible. And it's also gonna be one of those situations that without this little tripod, trying to hand hold this shot when it's that dark, it's not gonna come out good at all. Right now what I'm trying to see is if I can use my 18 millimeter lens. And what I'm really deciding is if I need to go any wider than this. Everything in the center is really pretty, centered on the Twin Towers, the Patronus Towers, being the main part of the shot and the mall on the bottom. So I think this is gonna cover it. The sun's about to set. The security guy that didn't want me to use the tripod has left for the evening and nobody else around here seems to care. Uh, next door to me, there's a guy with like a giant Joby, which is like an articulating tripod. You can wrap around things, making it really obvious he's shooting on a tripod. So I think I'm gonna be okay. But just in case, I'm just gonna set this up and I'm gonna leave it. And you can see on the edge here, I, I'm not that close to the ledge, but I can understand if you put your camera out here, you probably don't want it to just sit here unattended. So what I'm gonna do since sunset and blue hour and nighttime happen so fast, probably the span of 20 minutes from the sun setting, the sky turning colors and it being full dark, I'm just gonna stand up here and kind of guard my camera and also use my body to physically block it from being viewed from the security people in the background. So it kind of acts as a double situation. One, protect the camera just in case something happens. I don't think it will, it's really safe. And two, hide the fact that I'm using this little tripod from security. So I'm basically just gonna square everything up, get my settings right, and then just take a photo every few minutes so we can watch the progression of light. Right now I'm shooting at 18 millimeter, which is rather wide, so I can capture everything in the scene. But you might only have your iPhone with you, which is about 28 millimeter. And if I set it up about the same way, centering those two towers, what I really wanna be conscious of is not cropping the top of the tower. So I'm gonna to have to rotate up a little bit. If you're in a situation where you're not far enough away to capture the whole scene, sometimes it's better to just rotate things vertically and just constrict the composition a little bit, but then you can get more space on the top and the bottom. This is looking really nice. And compositionally, it's pretty simple. What I'm trying to do is keep the twin towers in the center and shooting at a wide angle, that tends to pull all of the other angles from the foreground and the bottom and even the sky into the center of the frame and really emphasize that this is the most important subject of the photograph, the Twin Towers themselves. This photo spot is amazing, and I highly recommend going up and seeing the view for yourself. Maybe just don't bring a personal video crew with you like I did. Thank you for watching Moments in Time. In the next episode, we visit one of Malaysia's biggest and busiest attractions, the Batu Caves. And yes, there will be some monkeys. We try not to break the fourth wall, which basically just means putting something in that shouldn't be there, like... But what if I really want to be in it? If you really want to be in it, you can be in I it. I can just jump in. You like can this. just jump in, yeah. Thanks, buddy. Gotcha. Good. And I'm here, too. <laughs> and Val, too. <laughs> <laughs>